Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the second episode of the third season of Overlord. So, last episode, basically beginning off this season three, and it was probably one of the more slice of life-ish episodes we've gotten, really. I think it was pretty much entirely just Nazarick stuff. Like, we saw some people outside, of course, you know. We have that scene where we found out that Albedo is a pure maiden that can't ride the anti-unicorn thingy. And that's a problem she attempted to rectify it later in the episode, which was a quite a quite a fun little scene. But yeah, it was mostly just, you know, Nazarick people doing Nazarick things, and it was great to watch. So maybe this next episode we will get into more political stuff. I don't know. I guess we'll see one or the other. So let's get into it. Three, two, one, play. Oh, well, that seems important. Any takers? <laughs> yes, that's that's a good idea. Oh right, yeah, that scene. <laughs> yeah. Always top priority. Yes. Which we haven't really made much progress on that front. Yes. Yes. Which is good progress. Yes. What, did you, did you forget that was your direct, that was your objective, that you totally told Demiurge, like, episode two? <laughs> I don't think, uh, I don't think that's how we planned it for that to go. Yeah, I do remember, I think it was episode two, where I just flew into the sky. It said something about it, you know, wouldn't be too bad to take over the world, and... Yeah, mirrors definitely did that to heart. I always love watching people walk in openings. You know, overload openings never disappoint. Interesting that they bother to show those goblins in the opening. I think those are the ones that are protecting the village that Beta looks after. I don't remember the name of the village. I just want to eat how tasty it is. Is that what that lyric said? Anyway, back into it. Yes. You decided that like episode two, first season. <laughs> wow. I haven't seen that in a while. This common aura. It's not. I mean, you brought it up. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. With his tail, is he happy? <laughs> yes. I, you can't really forget something like that. But he's a light novel reader, too. <laughs> yes! <laughs> he, he was trying to bait you into giving specifics on the time. Uh, that was a great reaction, though. Uh, it's not easy. <laughs> Any ideas? 
Oh, well, that should be fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with this. That'd be a fun development. Yeah. We're above all that after all. One individual. But assume he meant the princess there, but I'm just guessing. Oh, that's a great idea. Out of curiosity, what is your going to be your immigration policy as a country? Will you be building a wall is what I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, so all I have to do is see how great he is and everything else just fall into place. <laughs> oh, I love his va deliberate vagueness. <laughs> uh, good question. That was the name of it. I knew it. <laughs> uh. Of course. Which is much better in the long run. <laughs> yes, that was totally why that happened. <laughs> I don't think Ainz even knows what to say anymore. We gotta show Karn Village now? Yeah. Was that the reason why he was up all night? But yeah, now I know why we saw the goblins in the opening. Here they are. I... <laughs> oh, wow. He is looking good, though. No need to ask Kiss, though. Yeah, those goblins definitely do a lot of good for the village. So I was giving her those goblin summoning horn. It was actually a really great idea. I would imagine so. Yeah, even if they're true. Oh, well, that's something, I guess. Well, that's definitely helpful. I don't have many people to give. Yeah, the world's full of crazy people. Just gotta find them. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. I'm sure you can probably think of some ways you could pay him back. Yeah, it doesn't look that good either. Who knows what's going on in there? Ugh. <laughs> Don't touch me, you smell. <laughs> Is it, like, a red health potion? <laughs> oh, I guess that's progress.
<laughs> yeah, who knows what might happen otherwise. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Yes, that's been obvious for a while. Well, it's easier said than done. The strength appeal. <laughs> Good luck on that one. <laughs> uh, I don't see that going well. <laughs> uh, I think he would be better off trying a different style of appeal than a strength one, given his personality and everything else. <laughs> uh, I've seen him of other goblins. Uh, no. <laughs> No, it's obvious Nefiria will get her eventually. The one goblin has a nice mustache, I approve. Jukumbo, Jukumbo. <laughs> well, he's still thinking about that stuff. Yeah, do you need a nap, buddy? Don't fall asleep in the soup. I... Okay, that was pretty bad, too. Uh, I'd rather not look at your glistening meat if I could avoid it. Okay. Uh oh. Yeah, it's not possibly a mistake or anything. It's truly just a sign of love. <laughs> yeah, listen to the Lord of Bones over there. <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, there we go. So he went to Zoop eventually. That's not a good idea. I'm sure he's more than happy for you to go to his bedroom with him, so... You'll get no complaints from him. <laughs> uh, well, she's cute. Yeah, they're just doing a lot of things, really, to... So yeah, today we're basically getting, you know, Karn Village stuff. Which I'm fine with. Going from lizard stuff to goblin stuff. Maybe it's like if there were some rabbits or something back there. I was gonna make sure we have plenty of arrows. Strong walls. Yeah, hopefully they check to make sure no one's out there before they just practice shooting arrows. And she is tiny. How old is she anyway? Like seven? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure after an event like that, you change a little bit. Uh, what are you thinking? <laughs> You're kind of scaring me a little bit. That's what I want to know. I think she has some uh, unresolved issues. <laughs> Eventually. We're not worried or anything. Some high-tech stuff here. 
<laughs> she really is cute. Uh, yeah, that's not that's not exaggerated here. <laughs> yes. Good job. You should get a head pat as a reward. <laughs> uh, ooh, someone arrives. Oh, just another goblin. I'm not going to remember any of these goblin names, by the way. I hope not. We don't need a repeat of that. Yeah. Because Homosuke used to be the wise king of that forest, right? But now he's gone, so... Got a couple of wolves, love wolves with them. What about Shrek? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> oh, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh. <laughs> uh he probably could find a more subtle signal than that anyway. Please stop. <laughs> Please stop. Uh. <sighs> Can you repeat that for me? Uh, her tone of voice tells me she barely cares. Yeah, it's, it's no, no big deal. You see? I imagine goblins aren't too smart, you know, not to be racist or anything. <laughs> Those look like evil plants to me. <laughs> And he pulls out a mandrake and it screams and everyone dies at the end. <laughs> She's looking at you. That's a good sign, buddy. Go for it. Do your do your appeal. <laughs> Man, she really is just blushing up a storm over there. I can see why he likes her, but She's very plain in a in a show with characters like Balbedo and Sheltier. But everyone has their type, but you know. Oh. Uh what's up with him? Looks like he's been through a lot. Could be a trap. Oh jeez, that does look scary. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, I, I guess, but uh, I doubt she's gonna let that happen. Besides, we can take him. There's enough of us. Yeah, that was obvious.
Well, obviously. <laughs> That's life for you right there. Just throw rocks at it. That's not really how it works, but... Uh... Uh, man, it's that like dark aura that's uh, coming off of him. But he does make him look a lot scarier. I don't know how I feel about the 3D chains, but uh, I guess that's interesting. Ouch. Of course, uh, you could have phrased that a bit better, but... And those chin whip. It's going to be a raid battle at this point. <laughs> Did I actually take it down that easily? I mean, I wouldn't say easily, but I expected a bit more of a fight. Maybe a casualty or two. Well, not like a death, but maybe like a, a lost arm or something here and there. Sucks when that happens. It does look like it, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> just throw it on him. He could just say drink it, but why? When you can just splash it on his face. <laughs> uh... Yeah, you could probably phrase your thank you better as well. Fourth Sun's not that big of a deal, first of all. Yeah, what? They could be alive for that. Giant of the East? Demon Snake. Well, that I don't know about either of those creatures, but that sounds horrible. It actually, kind of remind me of that one, uh, the one quest from Konosuba that they didn't do about two giant monsters attacking to each other, and the quest said to kill them both. It kind of reminded me of that. But yeah, I think we have our new quest to deal with this problem. <sighs> yeah, we had very little of our actual Nazareth characters this episode. Just that scene in the beginning, then it was just all Karn Village. Which is fine, it feels like we haven't really checked, on, checked in on them for a while. I just seen how the goblin stuff is giving me lizard flashbacks. But you know, the, the creative overlord really likes his world building, so, you know. So that was the second episode of the third season of Overlord. Now we start off with a scene of our Einzol Gone there sitting in his throne room talking to his loyal subjects, basically saying, Okay, this is this is how it is here, Demiurge, tell everyone in, in an easy to understand way, you know, for their benefit, not mine, uh exactly where where we are right now, what we've done, and uh like what what we're doing going forward. Yeah, so uh, you know, for their sake, go do that. Because he doesn't want him or anyone else to know that he didn't really get what Demiurge's play was there, like, near the end of the last season. He tried to explain it to, you know, Ainz. He's like, yes, I totally get that. That was totally what I was going for and everything. So good job, Demiurge. You know, that kind of thing. I don't really remember the specifics because I have terrible memory. But I do remember that, yeah, Demiurge was doing lots of things be, you know, behind the shadows, you know, involving the princess of the kingdom and stuff like that. Now, the scene starts to get really good when Demiurge does just that. He talks about their... <laughs> their strategy, and he talks about how they subjugated the Eight Fingers, you know, Mata 
and you know, help them with that. And that this is, you know, instead they basically take over Riestai's kingdom through, you know, the underworld, and this is their first stepping stone to world domination. And that got even better when he was like, yes, yeah, so there's no one here that's a big enough fool to not know, you know, not know this stuff, right? Like, yes, of course, we're all aware of this. And then back there, Ainz is like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, Ainz is, uh, he's further behind in the, in the understanding of all this than the leader should be, to say the least. Now, this led to basically Ainz being a bit panic mode about not letting it be known to his subjects that he doesn't, he doesn't understand how any of this came to be. Because early season one, he basically, it was an offhanded comment that he said about, you know, wanting to take over the world. But Demiurge took it very seriously, told the others about it. And from that point forward, they've kept that end goal in mind. And they've been working, you know, to strive towards that. However, Ainz wasn't really aware of that. His biggest priority was still, you know, making a name for himself and trying to discover his other comrades. Which may or may not be in the game somewhere. That was kind of, at least I assume, that was his main goal. However, nobody else really knew that. They just thought, oh, well, world domination, clearly that's his number one goal. That's what's always in the back of his mind. Everything he does, that's our that's our end goal here. So there was a little bit of a misunderstanding there, which is what led to this very awkward situation of Ian sitting in that chair feeling very lost in his own, you know, country now. So very fun scene, just seeing him attempt to bait Demiurge and giving him information by deliberately being as vague as possible, like, ah, oh, yes, that thing, it did that other thing, right? Yes, that thing indeed. Uh, okay, but to, please tell me more about the thing, but he can't really say that. So he's just struggling here to, to keep up, and it's just really funny to watch his reactions to this stuff. Also, I really like Demiurge's wiggling his tail around in that sort of praise me, praise me, master sort of way. If he was a female, that would have been really cute. But since he's a guy, it wasn't. It was just, you know, mostly just funny. But, uh, yeah, Stimbiers, good job, boy. Head pat. That, that's just, that's all he wants, really. I think the biggest thing with this scene was just bringing, the, bringing up the idea of making Nazareth public, like becoming their own country, which I think was a really, really cool idea, and I would love to see that. I don't know exactly what would happen as a result of that, but that would, of course, be most of the fun, getting to see what would happen with that. I mean, they're already kind of like a country because they have technically brought in, you know, immigrants, I guess, you know, in the form of lizards, so... And I think Tsuwada as well is kind of in there as a mate or something, uh, thanks to, to Sebus. But uh, yeah, so I can see th I can see them expand in more as a country. And that just is a really cool idea in general. Instead of just, you know, because they don't want to feel like they're just, you know, an, one organization under the Riesai's kingdom or whatever. They want to be their own thing, which is cool. So I think they should just, you know, go for world domination. Just completely subjugate all the other countries, you know. The Reassized Kingdom, the Baharuth Empire, the Slain Theocracy, just take it all over everything else that's not human kingdoms, and yeah, just be the rulers of the world. I think that's a really awesome end goal to strive for. Now, the rest of the episode was, like I said, Karen Village stuff, which I don't really have a lot to say on. You know, it's nice to see Enri again, even though, she, like I said, she's kind of a plain girl, compared to our main girls like Albedo and Shaltir, and even Nabe, really. Nabe is pretty great as well. But yeah, I mean, she's she's a, she's a nice girl. She's lovely. I can see why Nefire likes her. And we're going to see Nefire doing his stuff, making great potions. He makes what I guess is a health potion that looks like a poison potion. So kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Enri's misunderstanding with Ayn's about thinking the blood, the, the red health potion was blood because they're not used to red health potions because usually it would turn blue in the manufacturing process. So. But yeah. Apparently he's made purple potions, which I guess are better than blue ones, but still not quite up there with red, so... So he's still not at Ainz's level, of course, but no surprises there. This episode was definitely the most we've ever gotten of the goblins, to the point where we're actually getting individual names, which I will not remember. And interactions, and a lot of them like Enri, which makes sense, because she's cute, and like, probably the cutest girl in that village. Honestly, as well as, you know, being their master, so... Obviously there would be some attraction there. However, anyone that knows whether knows anything knows that Nefira is obviously the one that will get together with her. So, she, and he's, uh, of course, he's more concerned really with his research and stuff like that than actually, you know, tapping that. But you do have some of the goblins attempting to help, like the one guy, you know, giving his, uh, you know, appeal suggestions, and that was just that was so that was so cringy. He just, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, he probably don't need to try that hard, dude. I think she likes her already. I. We did see plenty of blushing in the forest, and that's the easiest way to know that anime girl likes you is when she looks at you and blushes while doing so. That's usually your the signal to go for it. Signal of smash and all that. 
So, yeah, that was basically what the main thing with the episode was. They went to the forest to get ingredients and brought the goblins for protection because things are going wrong there. And then we saw an example of that with one little goblin child being chased by uh, some beast with a 3D chain around him and some, like, miasma, dark mist stuff emanating from him, looking just very intimidated in general. But it's nothing we couldn't handle when we worked together and, you know, the power of teamwork and friendship and all that. And we got a bit of information about some kind of conflict that's going on. About, like, I think you said two beasts, like, working together. That's pretty bad. So, uh, yeah, that'll be fun to see later on. Which I assume we'll get into the next episode. Either that or we'll transition back to Nazarick stuff. And then, you know, maybe get back to this eventually. It depends on how they want to do things. But yeah, Nimu is very cute. She's just adorable seeing her work hard and, like, you know, love her sister and wanting praise and all that stuff. She's just, she's just really fun to watch. And according to Enri, she's had a bit of a change since that one incident because that makes sense. That was obviously a very traumatic thing. She had lots of people she knew murdered and her sister almost murdered and it was just a very unpleasant situation in general. Oh yeah, Nimu's comment about isn't it usually the other way around as uh, Enri carried Nefira to the bedroom. That was pretty funny as well as it, it made it funnier the fact that uh, Enri got all pouty at because angry at her. That was pretty great. And then we had the laughing afterwards and Nemu's laughing to that was great. It was just a really fun little scene there in general. One important scene to mention is that Enri definitely has also has some kind of psychological issues from that incident as well with, you know, with the knife and looking at it all scarily and then using it way too hard. She's obviously has some issues she should probably, you know, work through at some point. And also this scene kind of led to mentioning something about lack of a blacksmith, so I assume they brought that up because they'll get a blacksmith at some point. Maybe one from Nazareth, you know, who knows? So that if that's the case, that will be interesting to see. But uh, yeah, that was, you know, it was another good episode. Probably not as good as the first episode because, like I said, less we had less Nazareth stuff this time and Nazareth characters are the ones I care about the most. But it was still nice getting to see, you know, what's up with Enri and Nefira and all that and just Karn Village in general because they were like the first people the Ainz really interacted with of this world, you know, helping them out and saving them and all that. So, you know, I do care about them as well a little bit, but, you know. Basically, good episode, even if it's not quite as good as the last ones, is basically my takeaway here. Thank you for watching, and thank you Snoky, as well as everyone else, for doing what you can to support the channel. It means a lot to me, and I hope we can continue to grow the channel together. If you want to do more to support the channel, then you can become a patron on my Patreon, and get cool rewards like early access to certain videos. Have a good one.